Greetings, everyone, and welcome to Tia No The Lassies of Europe. I'm your host, African lover, mocha lover right now. And welcome to Africa, or more specifically, Ost Africa. If you'd like to read about our country here, uh, please go right ahead with this little paragraph of text about the country if info. Uh, here's the next paragraph, a couple more paragraphs as well. But we, of course, are led by the Big Daddy, handsome Yee Yee haircut man himself, Hans Hutik here, who... Man, he looks real low, but he's a terrorizer, and that's why we love him. Volvots, and let's choose our national focus for this campaign: the Guardians of Africa. The God Africa is a nest of vipers. It is a land infested by bandits, overrun by rebels, endangered by terrorists, and even worse, full of traitors. It is clear by the day that among the four Reichs Commissariats, we are the only ones actually defending the interests of Germany and the Dark Continent, and ensuring that the light of national daddyism still shines even in the pitch black jungles covering this uh, crap hole. We are the guardians of this glorious continent, and we will ensure our legacy lasts for a thousand years. No one else can be trusted. Absolutely nobody. And I've gone ahead and. Oh, actually, we can just do all this. Uh, set up pretty much everything off screen. There's a few things I would like to say first, such as the mods reasoning are obviously TNO. Uh, as well as uh, the State Jester Tool mod, which is at the top of the screen, and Player of the Peace Conferences, because I always forget to turn it off. Also, we have this decision here for difficulty. For a more challenging, drawn out, and flavorful experience for you, the player, it is recommended that you enable Hard Mode. This will increase the strength of the South African nation to create a much more true to lore South African war. Once Hard Mode is enabled, it cannot be disabled. If you're looking for a more casual and quick war that can be easily won, however, it is recommended to not take this decision, which will disappear one year from the game start. Now, at least for me here, this is my first campaign in Africa, and we all love Africa, don't we? We all love Africa. Hashtag African love. But, I don't think I'm going to click this one just because I want to have a really enjoyable first time playing in Africa. So, I kind of know what's going to happen. I kind of really honestly don't know what's going to happen. We can buy resources from Germany, and all it does is add debt. Debt is but a number, so I'm not going to enable hard mode here. Whenever, because when, I will play eventually as RK, Central Africa, and Sudwest Africa eventually, so we will play as them eventually. But I think maybe for one of those campaigns, we'll click on hard mode. But for now, I want to enjoy this campaign and watch what happens as we have a lot of love coming through Ost Africa. Now we could use a little bit more steel and a little bit more aluminum. So, Daddy, um, Daddy Schmittler, let's see, aluminum and steel. We got steel and aluminum. Okay, I'll just buy it all. Okay, there we go. And we have a deficit. I actually, I'm spending more for civilian spending, but I'm cutting military spending, so we can't build anything just the way Africa was intended. I love it. Wow, mine is 132%. Holy crap. Surrounded by, oh, we got to check out our national spirits. Just another camp. <laughs> I love camp. Oh, don't you like going to camp? I remember going to a summer camp before and I made a little wooden toolbox. Oh, camps are great. Uh, oh, an Aryan only SS. Oh. Yes. And then the unending war. Well, we'll see about that. But let's read the next focus, hopefully. Perhaps once we're done with that. War preparations. Ooh. A dude strikes at a dude. Oh, a house divided is... Cannot... Ooh. Cleaning. Ooh, I like cleaning. Our colony is rife with this sense. Slaves who don't accept their place at the bottom of the racial pyramid. Tolerated natives who still fight for freedom. And even Aryans their own blood. Asking for these so-called reforms all weaken us from within when we should be at our strongest. It's time, though, to crush these pathetic dissidents. And remind everyone not only their place, but also that the, uh... Aryan's destiny is to dominate Africa forever. A concerted effort shall be undertaken from all offices of the colonial government in order to utterly destroy those who still haven't been vanquished in our earlier attempts. I love it, but the guardian of our continent, shimmering in the torpid heat of the afternoon, the sun casts its golden rays across the deep emerald gardens. Long shadows flow down the white pebbled pathways where every, or where every so often, or ever so often, a gardener could be glimpsed drifting through the gloom. It was a time the afternoon where men grew weary as the hours stretched on, awaiting the evening coolness that heralded the workday's end. In stark contrast to the slaves meandering throughout his umbral gardens, Rex Commissar Hans Hutig, Big Daddy there, stood at attention, his spine as straight as a marble pillars that flanked him. From the shade of his palace balcony, he frowned down at the gardeners with distaste, ignoring the sweat that soaked through his he heavy, woolen uniform. Hutig raised his mug to his lips and sipped, savoring the bitter taste of his afternoon coffee. Mmm. Determined to preserve the purity of his Arianism, it was one of the few luxuries he allowed himself. Finishing his delectable drink, 
Hutig returned to his office. A phalanx of revolving vans cooled the air, battering it around the room, a stark contrast to the sweltering malaise of Africa. It brought to mind nostalgic images of days spent in the wintry Saxony of his boyhood. Wiping such pointless thoughts from his mind with determined efficiency, Hutig sat behind his enormous mahogany desk and continued his paperwork. As he drafted yet another letter to Jemani requesting more aid, men, and supplies, Hutig briefly wondered how Muller and Shank were occupying the afternoon. He conjured the mental image of Muller pissing himself in a drunken stupor and Shank's desk collapsing under the weight of the unread reports. Neither of those indolent buffoons were fit to bear the title of Big Daddy Reich's Commissar, only he had the will. The strength, the purity to advance the Reich's interest in Africa. Smirking, he signed the letter, dumped it into the out tray, and snatched another document off the pile. Hans frowned as he read. It was a dossier detailing the results of an investigation into the collapse of a recently constructed bridge in Sambia, which was blamed on poor planning by the German engineers in charge of the project. In a sudden fit of pique, he crumbled it into a ball and threw it into the wastebasket. Scowling, Hutig leaned back, the creaking of his chair setting him on edge. Always he was surrounded by idiots and incompetence. How was he supposed to impose an Aryan ideal in Africa when the dregs were all he ever got? The cravens, the fools, bunglers, and exiles of Reich saw fit to dump in his lap. Germania seemed to think of Quigmine or Quilmain as a refuse pile. Fit only for those inadequate to serve in the right proper, but what, asked a little voice in the back of his mind, did that make him? For a moment, Hutig sat idle, doing nothing but listening to the fans until their steady thrumming seemed indistinguishable from the beating of his heart, then sighing through his nose. The Reich's Commissar bent forward to fish the crumpled dossier out of the wastebasket. He hated all this, and somehow he couldn't... Uh, oh, get away. Yep, could... Oh, there's a tank. So, we have the Unending Ward. Apparently, we can choose the operative. Herman? Or oh, Anton? Doesn't matter. Let's go with Herman. So, we are surrounded by degeneracy. Ooh. Oh, that construction speed. The stability. That war support. Oh, it hurts. I'm sorry. I'm going crazy. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going nuts. Whatever. 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 And then, military austerity. Uh, let's see. Not bad. Oh, Speer. A degenerate. Uh, national daddyism. Let's see. Juno Bureau for Ost Afrikanisch Angolan Height. Ungelingen Heiten. Huh, I don't speak too much German, but enough to know to spend some more money. Let's see if we can actually build something here. Oh, <laughs> we can't build anything yet. Oh, buy steel. Okay. If I get the button to, or the option to click things, I've got to click things. It's only debt, right? Clean the colony. Huh, the Ring of Fire. Ooh, the Ring of Fire. Ooh, decryption. Oh, let's do the drums echo. The indolent dudes who should be our brothers are content on doing no just nothing. Absolutely nothing. Mueller spends the time hunting beasts he shares so much with, especially in the brain department, while Shank, the traitor, showers the inferiors in time and money he could surely find a more productive use too, but we are different. Yes, we are different. We have the keen eyes and ears, and we know. We see the dust rising to the south and where our nation lies broken and ready to collapse. And we hear the drums of war, those same drums who led our glorious big daddy at home to begin his crusade against imperialism. We shall follow his shining example. Let the drums roar, make them louder, louder, and louder. Meeting the General Bureau. Hans always found it amusing to call a meeting of the General Bureau to take place in a few hours, forcing his subordinates to scurry from their villas to his palace, desperate not to be the last one to arrive. At last, trying their best to look unflappable, his underlings had arrived by helicopter and chauffeured sedan, and were seated in, a pl in the palace's enormous conference room. The meeting was not without purpose. Always feeling the knife hovering behind his back, Hutek had become suspicious of anti-national socialist tendencies among some of his officers. Eyes narrowed, he looked around the table, glancing at each man in turn, who noting who flinched, and more important, who didn't. Could anyone on the Juno Bureau have spears sympathies? To anyone but Hans, that would have been unthinkable. Eyeing his generals, he made the mental note to have them put under even more thorough surveillance. Many began, as the last servant left the room. We live in precarious times. I will be brief from the outside. We are threatened by the degenerates and the Judeo-capitalists. From within, on the borders of the Reich's Commissariat, we are troubled by rebels, escaped slaves, and so-called revolutionaries. Though we may expect that the racial purity of our men shall lead us to victory, triumph is not assured to prevail against the threats that face us. We must root out the cancer of the hearts of Ost Africa. He paused, looking around at his men, hoping for a reaction bare, looking nervous, always afraid of being replaced as the favorite. Dupont, gray face as usual, uh, Chmielski, and Mangles staring back at him with their dead eyes. Ooh, Mangles here. Stifling an annoyed sigh, Hutig continued, We cannot fight the barbarians when our own men are tainted by the stain of reformism. It is imperative that we root up the liberals in our ranks like weeds. They are not fit to serve the Reich, not even 
to, to the call themselves Aryan. You will cooperate with my intelligence operatives in identifying and liquidating these traitors. We cannot allow these subversives to undermine national socialism. The conference continued to take, laying out a plan to eradicate the subversives, all while feeling that, that spectral knife draw closer and closer to his flesh. He had to scour the taint of treacherous thought from Ost Africa without mercy, without quota, before it was too late. I would just as soon have expected restraint from a hyena prowling amongst the corpses. We're getting about 0 0.7677 political power. Not too bad. Not too bad. Man, that haircut, though. Oh, so handsome. Arms for the Aryan. Set up patrols. Help me to help you. I kind of like that. Southern land grants. I like the political power. Home of the exile, eh? Slave munitions. Boa support staff. Ooh. Booby trap the border. I kind of like that. Building up a stockpile. Ooh, I kind of like that, too. Let's do arms for the Aryans. With lo war looming, we need to enact all of our contingency plans. Our reserves shall be fully mobilized, and all, our, all of our armories will produce at full capacity, no matter the cost and slaves. Still, our industrial capacity is limited, and we need to ask for help from the government in Germania. While we wait for the supplies, we shall implement harsher training regimes and increase emergency measures, so that we won't be caught unprepared by a sudden attack to our vulnerable areas. Oh no, no, no. That would be quite... Uh Unwanted. Africa, adio, they're Italians. The last thing the militia had expected was two white people, unarmed, wandering into the village from a thick of the bush. After managing to capture the village from Helen's troops, the black rebels had bunkered down, repelling any enemy scouts that came too close, but none of them had been brave or foolish like these two, who fell right into the hands of a rebel patrol. Screaming and pleading for mercy, they were dragged into the main square to be lined up against the wall, and much of the amusement of the militia never stopped taking film, even in their final moments. The leader of the militia, a massive black man, wearing a pair of German military sunglasses alongside a similarly improvised uniform, wanted to execute the two German scouts in person. Please, for God's sakes, we're not Germans, one shouted, as the other kept filming despite numerous hands trying to grab his camera and close. We're shooting a movie, a movie! Quickly, he produced documents from his pockets. Regno d'Italia. So the letters on the exterior. The rebel leader squinted, struggling to read the document. Jaga Petty? A few minutes later, the rebel leader, whose nom de guerre was Simba. Well, okay, okay. Was treating the two Italians no longer as intruders, but as welcome guests. With a smile on his face, he showed the two around the village, especially the places where fighting had happened and where the grim remnants of the fallen German garrison and their collaborators lay to rot. Our people will be free, Simba proclaimed before the camera with a wide smile, gesturing towards the impaled skull of a German soldier still wearing the Stahlhelm, now serving as a decoration for the village's main entrance. All of Africa will be free one day that evening. Jacopetti talked with a few of the Simba's men, all farmers, simple people, driven to rebellion by desperation as they sped towards the Sud West African border on a legit German jeep. Simba was cutting up to compensate with a ride the two Italians, who had soon consigned him and his men to the fame they deserved. Sud Africa beckons. Oh boy. The drums echo. Hans Sutig rose, as I always did, at the stroke of five o'clock. Following his rigorous morning exercises and a simple nutritious breakfast of porridge and fruit, he donned his freshly pressed uniform and flung open the doors to his office while where he would work until the moon shone bright in the night sky. After turning on the many fans scattered around the room, Hutig strode to his desk. As he sat, he heard the horrible creaking from the chair that made his teeth rattle in his temples. A temple's pulse. Scowling, his morning was already thrown into disarray, and he made a mental note to have the slave who had failed in the oh-so-simple task of fixing the chair flogged. Taking a deep breath, Hutek centered himself, ignoring the pulsing headache he was already beginning to develop. He unfurled a map of Sub-Saharan Africa, and taking his pen, began to circle two circle settlements and military installations on the border of South Africa. Reichskommissar Komasa Hutig did not think himself a fool. He knew the fragile peace between the Reichs colonies and South Africa was tenuous at best. Though supposedly determined to maintain the neutrality, South Africa's Anglo-Saxon government found itself racked by internal tension caused by rebellious Boers and natives, which they were unable to resolve as a consequence of their pathetic degeneracy. The South African government increasingly maintained its precarious clutch on the nation thanks to aid from the OFN, who were busy digging their claws into the allegedly neutral nation. An OFN aligned South Africa was an unacceptable threat to the Reich's interest in Africa. Hutig began to draw arrows towards Petersburg and Nelspruit. This fragile peace would not last much longer. When the war came, he would be ready. It echoed loudly in him because he was hollow at the core. Who can script more workers? War preparations. We need... Oh, we have so much to do. So much to do. So much to see. Ah. Uh, oh, set up patrols. Ah, help. Set up tests. Oh, we have gas. Oh, I want gas. Booby. Oh, we gotta go. I'm going for that immediately. And actually, can we buy more steel? Yep. Uh, I'm gonna buy more steel. Steel is nice. Everything else, not too much. But steel is what we could use. And I hope you guys are enjoying this. I know I'm I'm going crazy with this right now. So I hope that we can do well. And we don't fall apart too quickly. So next up. Ooh, I want, we gotta get, I want gas. So help me 
to help thee. Our Boer friends are fighting just like us against the remnants of the decadent imperialist nations. While poorer than average South Africans, they show the typical Aryan bravery and that made us win the last war, and we should ensure that they are compensated for that. As a reward for their efforts, we shall institute the Deutsche Rhodesian Baufonds, a bound program to help develop the Rhodesian land that we will leave to our erstwhile allies after the war. Surely they'll be grateful for that, and we will begin a long and fruitful cooperation. Let's hope it's fruitful, so... We get a whole one, two, three, four infrastructure, which is not bad because the max infrastructure in some places here in Africa or off Africa is thirty percent. In some places, training in Quillamain. Flicking a switch, the drill sergeant killed the lights for a moment. The only sounds that were the ceiling fan whooping the fetid tropical air around the room and gathered, and the gathered soldiers shifting in their seats. Another flick, the whirling of a film projector. An image appeared on the wall, accompanied by boisterous military music. Africa, your duty. The title card cut to a montage of shots of natives starving, loitering, training with the shoddy weapons. Invariably, they were shot at a distance or from a high angle. The African subhumans began an authoritative voiceover, seen in their natural state of barbarity. To a German, the depravity of the native Africans may seem shocking, even unbelievable. Before the arrival of the Aryan to Africa, the subhumans of this land existed in a state of animalistic savagery, louder than, lower than all others on earth, even lower than the Jew. Shots of mud huts, sparse fields, and men's with spears. The film abruptly cut to classic low-angle shots of blonde-haired German soldiers, handsome and all. Lines of tanks rolling down the streets of Quilemane, rippling flags and so on. It was a slavishly amateur imitation of Riefenstahl style, but the message was clear. You are part of the Aryan vanguard, the false bringing civilization and the values of national socialism to the untamed shores of Africa. We will civilize this land. We will cleanse the tainted degeneracy and decadence from its people, as the subhumans will often not accept the rightful place in our purified new order. It is your duty to enforce the edicts of the Reich in these, our newest and wildest territories. Shots of Germans with machetes cutting through the jungle, launching mortars. You are trailblazers, entrusted with carrying forth the sacred flame of Aryanism. And so it continued in on and on in much the same vein for a full two hours. Wow, that's, that's quite a movie. The soldiers, desperately trying to not appear bored in front of the drill sergeant, stared rapt at the flickering image. At last the film ended, the projector clambered to a stop, plunging the room once more into darkness. Your strength is just an accident arising from the weakness of others. Oh. Hey, set up patrols? I like stability, because we have minus 12%. Jesus. Oh, civilian budget boost. Oh, we, going, we want more budget. More boost. More boost. <gasps> I want gas. Reduce the patrols. Why would we want her? No. No, 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 no. We, we want patrols. Boost. Cut. Nice. So, yeah. It's, it, you know, as Rax Komasari in Ost Africa, we're maintaining our budget. Not too bad. We actually have an annual yearly deficit. Not bad. Steel? Okay. It's more steel then. Now, I don't remember exactly when uh, the Civil War kicks off, but I already put my soldiers down on the border with them. So, or the war, not a civil war. But with the war a little bit closer every day, we need to actively prepare for the worst. While the other Rex Commissars, it feels an insult to the office who take represents to even call them as such, have done nothing we are prepared. In order to slow the enemy advance until we can fully mobilize our scattered force and inflict as many losses to the enemy without any on our part, we shall disseminate the border with dozens of large minefields and wiretap most bridges and railroads the enemy might use against us. With the border effectively booby trapped, the OFN will think twice before entering our realm. Oh, the surprises we have in store for them. Oh, I hope so. A creation item, very nice. What will the future bring? And very good. The Deutsche Rhodesian bow falls. Shooting his eyes from the harsh morning sun, Jim's Cumberdale squinted down the driveway, the cloud of dust drifting in the wake of the family Volkswagen as his wife took Godfrey to school in Fort Victoria. Sipping tea on the balcony of the plantation to say that had been his father's and the his father's before him, James enjoyed the warmth of the rising sun, loosening his rheumatic joints as he gazed over the fields of swaying hemp, switching as far as the eye could see. Soon it would be time to wake the slaves. Finishing his tea. James stepped indoors to the drawing room to reread the telegram that he had received the prior afternoon. Try as he might, he couldn't make out the hidden catch. According to the official telegram, the Reichskommissar had approved the provision of additional funds for British planters to exploit the undeveloped land for their mutual prosperity. The Deutsche Rhodesian Baufonds, they called it. If James hastily learned German served him right, that translated as German Rhodesian Building Fund. James sunk into his most comfortable chair, spreading himself around until he felt comfortable. Then he read it again. Life under the Nazis hadn't been as bad as he'd been expecting. For the most part, they left the British colonists in their new Reichs Commissariat alone, but there's always been an underlying tension between the British and the new German overlords, and yet, as of late, they've oddly been conciliatory. First, they permitted English language radio broadcasts, and then they granted British planners vast tracts of land in exchange for a meaningless pledge of loyalty he had happily given. They'd even given him a free t TV set, where Godfrey liked to plant himself on the weekends where he should have been doing his Aryan biology homework. 
<laughs> the Reich's Commissar never did anything out of the goodness of his heart, so what exactly did he expect to get out of this? Slipping the telegram into his, or slipping it into his suit pocket, James stepped back outside to watch the overseer's herd slaves enter the fields. In his grandfather's time, all this land had been untamed. If these funds came through, perhaps they'd give him, him the chance to stamp his own mark on Africa. This has also been one of the dark places of the earth. Well, maybe dark for you, but it's pretty great for us. Oh, we get gas. Oh, I love it. Oh, I love gas. Make examples of degenerate SS. All right, chemicals for... Hmm, guns? Hmm. Building a stockpile. War support. I would like to get more stability. For, oh, consumer goods production efficiency cap, huh? Reduce rations? Oh, boy. More construction speed. Well, we don't even have construction speed. We're not even building anything. Why must you pay me so? So, what do we do here? We're, good, we're doing that one, obviously. We're, we have the patrols going. I would maybe like this. Uh, prioritize SS development. What? Well, actually, how many guns do we have? Actually, I forgot to make some divisions. It's only... Oh, it's already May. Wow. What divisions do we have? We have these guys, which aren't too bad. Go low. Go high. The Wehrmacht. Eh. Shoot Stupa. And there goes all of our manpower. And we have SS Ost Africa here. As if, oh, we actually have tanks in here? I didn't realize that. Oh, that's kind of nice. Well, if that's the case... Uh, we might want to have slave munitions, maybe. Booby trap the border, of course. Building a stockpile is not bad. I mean, we're already almost over there already. Um, Southern land grants. Get your free TVs. It's on the right side. That's not bad. I, I want free TV. More war support. More stability. Ooh, colonial information. Oh, I love the stability. Oh, but I want, I, I want, ooh, munitions. Oh, that's not bad. We could actually probably use that. The Homes of the Exile, we get plus 10 army speed. We'll do this one next. Our officer corps is, of course, selected by the Hea from its headquarters in Germania, which means we have no choice over who is sent to serve here. Of course, this has resulted in our officers being mostly exiles from the SS, removed from the mainland for their views not in line with mainstream national socialism and their mixed loyalties with Burgundy. Still, this could be an opportunity as their skills is great and their zeal for the protection of the Aryan race without uh, peer. Also, with some of their ideas about how to deal with the, with corruption in the other Reichskommissariat are very, very interesting. Oh, there goes the triumvirate. It deserved to collapse. Oh my goodness. Now, from what I understand, we gotta make sure we don't lose Mozambique. That's probably the most important thing, that's what I've heard. Or Amelstadt? Like, early traps? This occupied, like, minor damage. I wanna test some gas, man. Oh, we're getting gassy, guys. We're getting gassy. Hey, steal! I'd like to do that one, but we'll see what happens. I, I literally just did this for the gas. So, passive defense schemes. The Reichskommissar sat on the balcony of his palace, watching the slaves meander through his still tenebrous gardens as the freshness of twilight chilled the sweat, moistening the, his heavy woolen uniform. Taking a moment to look up from the map sprawled over the table, he felt a thrill of quite accomplishment run through him as he gazed upon the orderliness of his design. Soon, all of us Africa will be remade in its image, order, discipline, efficient, everything and everyone in their proper place. Until the dawn of that golden future, however, there was work to be done, tearing himself away from the view Hutig focused his attention back to the pile of maps already darkened as the light faded. He would have to order a slave to bring him a lantern. He was enjoying the evening serenity too much to return to his office. With a single ivory finger, he traced the border between Ost Africa and South Africa, that border that, when, it, it, when his carefully laid plans come to fruition, would soon cease to exist. Nevertheless, although his troops were better disciplined, trained, and equipped than any than the South African rabble, he was not foolish enough to think that a victory, a certainty, until the flag of the Reich was raised over Cape Town. Until then, he devised contingency after contingency, th should the unthinkable come to pass, and the enemy push into Ost Africa. In the case that ludicrously pause plausibility came to pass, he had ordered the entire border mined and riddled with traps to cut down the advancing forces of the enemy. Nowhere was left for the open degenerates to enter Ost Africa unscathed, with their forces getting blown apart like sausages in a pan for every step that they took. Their forces would get slowed sufficiently for Hutig's crack troops to crush their advance and rush push them to the sea. Hutig turned his head to look into the distant, dusty, dusky horizon. Any day now that the degenerates and subhumans could come, he could almost see the simian horde cresting over the hills. When they came, they'd find him waiting for them. The stiffness of life did not in the least resemble a peace. Madagascar requests medical equipment. That worm, Maurice, wanted Hans, of all people, to bail him out? This had to be a joke. Send his valuable resources to help that degenerate moron fix his mistake? Was he kidding? There was no way in heck. There was no way out of, outside of this. It would be less of a waste to just throw this stuff into the ocean than it would be to send it Madagascar. Then again, there was possibly some benefit to being seen propping up a failing Rex Commissariat. The request was not so excessive that it would sink Ost Africa. Germani would see what was happening, of course, and Hutig and Maurice would both get what they deserved. <laughs> Let them die. As much as I want to do that, we're going to go with that one. Oh, man, we need more stuff here. Oof. 
Nixon. Hey, he did a gamer move. What changed his mind? Good job, Nixon. <laughs> I don't know. Doesn't really matter. Oh, Domus, Hotman, Engelbot Edras. Well, we've got some heavy cruisers and some destroyers, and that's literally all we've got. So... I'm going to go with Wilhelm, with Mr. Funny Facial Hair. Steel? No more steel. Conclude more workers. I kind of want to do that one, too, but eh, it's not really worth it for 500 days. Homes of the Exile, Slave Munitions, I would like more factories, please. Who said that a slave can't fight for the Reich? Of course, they'll never be willing to take up arms for the defense of the Master Race, but this doesn't make them entirely useless. They can still work in our factories, supplying the Bravarians, fighting for our homeland. Men, women, elders, children, all will serve the Reich in the thousand years, no matter their capabilities, no matter their opinion, no matter the cost in human lives. After this one, uh, oh. Hello. What happened there? I love slave munitions. Os Afrikanische Soldaten. Rex Komosal Hutig strode back and forth before the line of soldiers standing at attention in the baking middle of the sun. Irritated at being dragged from his work in the palace, he looked them over. Sorting them each into the two kinds of officers sent to him by the Reich. SS officers considered too ideologically dangerous for the pseudo degenerates in Germania. And a motley of incompetence, idiots, and failures who had been judged deficient of more merit meritorious service. As usual, most would be useless. Bodies in uniform sent to reinforce outposts or plantations. There were a handful of men who showed promise, but they were the exception. The Rex Commissar had to admit to himself that, for the most part, the men under his command were unmotivated, undisciplined, low in morale, and ideologically wayward. Well, he just had to find a way to make it work. Listen up, he barked, startling some of the men who had just begun to doze in the sun. Whoever you were in the past, you are now men of the Ost-African Officer Corps. A band of brothers dedicated to the immortal cause of national socialism. Understand that we come to civilize this land to wrench it from the subhuman natives who do not deserve its bounty and the pathetic colonist degenerates who failed in the same task. Who took, took a deep breath? This is a great opportunity. You've been sent here to the borders of a beloved Reich because Afira judged you to have the strength to advance the Aryan race in the strange and wild, wild land. So... Though your new surroundings may seem strange, though you may yearn for your homes, do not forget that you are the most important bulwark against the subhumans and the degenerates. Hans did not expect many to be moved by his speech. Most of them stared back at him sullenly. Ha Hutig was not blind to the concerns of his men. He knew many viewed Ost Africa as a punishment position and were reluctant to be there. Nevertheless, he also saw the gleam his words had provoked in the couple of men he had judged as being the cream of the crop. If he had only been more, had more men like that, he could impose the ideals of national socialism over the whole continent. No, more than that, the whole world would tremble at the feet of the rightful Aryan masters. For now, he thought ruefully, ruefully, he'd have to do with what he could with the dregs. Bells of a spark of the sacred flame. How's the budget doing? Hans is running a tight ship. Oh, oh, it's down here. Reduce patrols? Nope. Steel it is. We could lay traps. I don't want to lose any territory. I mean, from what it sounds like from the decisions, it won't be too difficult to win this war, so we shall see. Especially with this. Oh, there goes Tito. Goodbye, Tito. They're training. Maybe we should train, too. But I would like to do this stuff, but Masters of the Desert, I don't know how long we have before things really get kicking. Prepare the werewolves? You know what, I want to make sure that we go down one way fully before anything else happens, and I much as much as I want to go down this way, I think we're going to keep going down this, this area here. So, building a stockpile, shall we? While well, we have enough weapons to equip our regular forces, the last war taught us that attrition is a constant. An increasingly large army will need much more equipment than we can currently produce. In order to ensure we won't face shortages at a critical moment in the war, we need to stockpile all the produced equipment and properly maintain everything currently in use, be it new or old, from a mighty panzer to a single Luger pistol round. We will collect and preserve everything we might need, every little thing. Very good. Oh, we got 10 days left. Wow, we got quite a few days. Oh, uh, we can't even build anything. Why do you pain me so much, you think? Hans! Hans, why? I guess we're cutting down the death. It's kind of nice. Five days left. And research. We're going to transistor computers. Uh, this stuff over here. And improved jet fighters. Just because we have basically tanks in our divisions. I think I might go with land doctrine-wise. A certain direction, which we'll get to once we have research done. So, building a stockpile. Yes, please. And 100 more. Uh, what do we want? Reduce patrols. Reduce rations for workers. They don't need rations. It's only 15 political power. Nice. Following the example. Hey, we can maybe build a road. Look at that. In like nine years. What if we did this? Never. 
Let's do 90 years then. Deeply inhaling the heady scent, Newt tipped the head, his head back to swallow the cognac in a single gulp, savoring its rich, bitter tang. It was enough for, to take him outside of himself for a single moment of indescribable bliss. He felt himself floating, weightless, until the cacophony of the cicadas and the glowing sensation of the sun's infernal rays on his alabaster skin drew him back to reality. Parting his eyelids, for a moment he saw nothing but a hazy silhouette as his eyes were forced to adjust to the harsh afternoon light. As his vision cleared, he saw the slave tied to a post, his, his bare back facing the dithered or gathered dignitaries. Hutig lazily raised his hand, feeling the sweat pooled in his armpit, coolly trickled down his flank. Proceed, he ordered, slowly shifting his gaze to the officer with a whip. Crack! The slave cried out through the gag in his mouth as a furious red gash appeared across. Appeared across his back, or shoulders. Krakow was joined by another as the blood from the first oozed down his back. Who took held his glass behind him. Where was dutifully refilled. He sipped. Frowning, the slave had been assigned such a simple task. To fix the teeth, rattling, migraine-inducing creak in his chair, and yet this effortless chore had somehow evaded him. Setting the glass upon the table, Hutig looked at his underlings through the corner of his eyes. He enjoyed giving them a sudden summons to his palace to test how obediently they would respond. Bear had arrived within an hour, driving up from Quailamine, and Kmilski had arrived soon after by helicopter from his villa. Mango had sent his apologies, insisting he was close to a breakthrough. It was his third time, making Hutig ponder if he'd have to do something about him. They turned to his... They turned his stomach to Hutig, to Hans. His subordinates were barely less degenerate than their own slaves. Bear, watching this punishment with barely concealed boredom, was a drunken glutton. Chmielski, on the other hand, had sickly light in his eyes and seemed to thrill at each crack of the whip. He had heard of Chmielski's villa, of the leather couches, book bindings, and lampshades made from the height of disobedient slaves. Holy cow. Hutig felt his stomach turn with a distaste as he looked back to the slave. Neither of them had anything close to his purity, his strength. They were barely fit to call themselves Aryan. Hans watched the rest of the spectacle without passion. Slaves may not always be reliable, needing the whip to put them on the right path, but through the labor of these subhumans, he would be able to secure his legacy and turn all Africa into a titan of industry, crown jewel of the Reich. Smiling, he motioned for another splash of cognac. The mind, the mind of man is capable of anything. Anything and everything. Alright, so let's take a look here. We have now enough daddy steel. Oh, we've had a lot of them. We have one thing of steel. Which could be worse. Could be much, much worse. Uh, and we don't really need to buy any more for now, so we're kind of okay. We're kind of okay. We got 10 army XP as well. Not bad. Uh, prioritize g g garrison development. Bonus for stuff. Okay. Or prioritize SS development. Military austerity and stuff. Make examples oh, of degenerate SS or operational garrisons. Uh, let's see. Promote loyalists. Well, let's take a look. We got that stuff which we can close. Make examples, which we do lose some manpower, but you do get some stability and war support. Versus the operational garrisons, which I'm not sure where that is. So we'll wait, and let's do Masters of the Desert. Uh, right, Ost Africa has no desert, but jungles. This seems very defensive-wise, so I want to go with Master of the Desert, because we're going to be pushing into a desert, desert region. Well, also, Africa has no desert to speak of. South Africa has wide extensions of sands and dry land, making it essential to have troops skilled in desert warfare. With the legacy of the Africa Corps still venerated throughout the army, we have all that experience we need to ensure that, in the event of an actual offensive, we can feel troops capable of fighting in their native soil, negating any events that they would get by fighting close to their home. So let's do that one. And we have about three days left, which is totally, 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 totally okay. Yeah, we could spend time here. Uh, we get enough political power. I guess we'll do one at least, right? Building a stockpile. Mass of the desert, well, shall we? We shall. War stockpiles, fluorescent lights flickered on one after the other, lighting the vastness of the warehouse, who takes glistening polished books. Boots clicked on the concrete floor as he stepped inside. Band Chmielski halt on their heels, each trying to stand straighter and walk faster than the other. They're jockeying or jockeying for Hutik's attention, going once again unnoticed. Hutik looked around at the immense shelves stretching far in every direction. They were stacked with huge green crates, thousands of them. Wordlessly glancing aside at Bear, his underling responded to his unspoken demand for further information. The zone contains medium grade assault weaponry, Rex Commissar. Some will remain here while others will be sent to our Boer allies or stockpiled in a network of hidden networks. 
weapon caches in the south. Hans stopped abruptly, bringing the train of advisors, officers, and adjutants to a screeching halt behind him. As Hutig turned on his heels, Bale began to wonder if he had been foolish in drawing the Reich's Commissar's attention. And have all agreed upon specifications been followed to the letter? For I warn you, said the Reich's Commissar, raising his voice so all could hear him. Any hint of graph, the slightest indication that corners have been cut, even in the most minute fashion, will be treated as high treason to the Reich and to national daddyism. Seeing Chmielski smirk at the humiliation of his rival, Hutig swung to fix him with a hard stare. Something amusing, Herr Chmielski? Do not forget that this stockpile represents our most important defense against the degenerates and the subhumans. These weapons must last us years if need be, and we should... And should we leave these chinks in our armor, they will be taken advantage of with characteristic savagery. Hans turned back to the shelves of stacked weaponry, a note of weariness creeping into his voice. Continue the acquisition of additional material. We can never be too well prepared, for someday the horde will come, and we must be ready. Yes, we must be ready. Beyond the Rex Commissar's back, Bea and Chmielski exchanged a look of concern. And the emptiness, an empty, Im empty immensity. There she was, incomprehensible, firing into a continent. And now we have the legacy of the Africa Corps. Hutig felt the sun scorch the tops of his ears as he strode through the swirling dust flanked by Bea and that other seaward dude, each glancing inside at each other and attempting to move steadily closer to the Rex Commissar than his rival. Hans noticed none of this jockeying for his approval, focusing his attention instead on his soldiers engaged in a mock battle on the dune expanse that stretched before them to the far horizon. It had not been easy to track down distinguished men who had served in North Africa, and it had been even harder to convince them to uproot themselves and travel halfway across the globe to Ost Africa in their twilight years to train a new generation of German soldiers in the desert warfare. If, as he expected, there would be soon be war with the South African degenerates, his men would need to be, learn to, be, to comport themselves in the arid, desolate terrain of the Bushveld. Reaching the crest of the hill, Bea and Chmielski, panting with their exertion behind him, Hute greeted the advisors. Sipping tea and lounging in the camp chairs, they were a trio of overweight men with bristly white mustaches, who he found difficult to distinguish. As he was handed a pair of binoculars, he wondered how such men, such as them, could have come to become war heroes. On the hill, the sun was as hellishly bright as ever, but down in the dried basin, the men had kicked up a tremendous cloud, dust, cloud of dust. Watching them through his binoculars, Hutig wondered if they could even see each other through the gloom, so he supposed. This was the kind of thing that they'd get used to if they were going to be victorious in South Africa. It was inconceivable that something so inconsequential as terrain could stand in the way of the spread of national socialism. They were conquerors, and for that, you only want brute force. Followed with... Oh, I just don't know which one I want. Let's see. 2-2-1. Two, two, one, or 1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1. One, 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 one. Military police, I'm not really focusing on military police, turret, armor, infantry, infantry stuff, engineer, I kind of like prefer the engineer stuff, uh, let's see, we did go to the right side here, so maybe we'll go with the prioritize the SS development, yeah, I want to go with that one, just because we went to the right side here, let's go to the right side of this side. It is evident that we need to focus all our efforts towards strengthening our SS brigades. While less numerous than our Hale garrison, they are much better trained and equipped and far more motivated than their regular equivalents. As it seems that the war might last for longer than previously calculated, we must prepare our elite troops to decisive breakthroughs quickly on the battlefield or risk grinding to a halt. Since we can't afford an attrition war against a more industrial power, our elite SS are exactly what we need for the task. Uh, let's see, actually I did not do one thing here yet, and that was the Air Force. Do we have any... No, we don't. Okay. I missed nothing. And also, we did get some more manpower, but I just spent it on these guys here, so it is what it is, you know. Anything else? Oh, oh reduced rations? I think so. Oh, we need chemicals for guns, though. Oh, we need oh, we need liquid reserves. My bad. No more cutting down debt. We need them liquid reserves. They don't need food. They don't need food. Where are they going? We'll be done in about a decade. It's t That's all right. We'll be here in a decade, most positively. Oh, I forgot to look at this. Social development. Mass illiteracy. Okay. Rudimentary research facilities, okay. Centralized agriculture, okay, no, not bad, not bad, could be a lot worse. Uh, poverty rate, it's not great, but, you know, it is what it is. Oh, wait, hold on. Ooh, less than 5%. If we go low enough, we might just be able to hit Spartan Ideal. And that, my friends, might be exactly what we want. Let's see, nascent power tools is not doing anything. We have industrial expertise going down, nascent industrial base, not bad, political interference, pretty normal, and non-nuclear power, not yet. Taking a sick day, Hans' head pounded with every breath, hammering agony into his eyes and stomach, running at slice of the Reich was challenging enough with staff idiotic at best and malicious at worst, hurting loyal sons of the Reich to their deaths against bloodthirsty savages, now pained him so much as crane his neck, how can he do any more for this world and still suffer? 
Hutig massaged his temples as he sat up and bile rocketed from his stomach, killing the man over. Still, he mustered air and will into his throat as desperate hands fumbled for the bedside telephone. Get in here now, he sputtered. Bea stormed to the room. Hey, Hutig, I came in as soon as I heard... Then he stopped dead and registered the, uh, the view, blinking once, twice, thrice with wide open eyes. Before him, the most feared man in Africa lay next to a puddle of yesterday's dinner. Hutig's eyes flickered to life. Bea, he groaned, stop gawking, help me for once, you imbecile. Bea had seen... Things that would drive saints into insanity, but this he stammered for an answer. Oh, of course, my ex commissar, I uh, I'm at your leisure here. Soup, who sniffed, mucus dripping from this stodgy nose before I draw my gun and find someone who will. It took the attendant more mere seconds, uh, more seconds than appropriate to fashion a leave at once. Hey, Hutig. Moments later, Bear returned with a tray full of soup and a handful of servants ladling generous helpings onto a bowl as he filled it with a pack of blue 88. The advisor blurted out a dismissal to his companions. Bea turned to the other concerns, to turn to other concerns as they left, like the pill on his hand. Years of assassination attempts had taught Hutig never to accept capsules from any, under any circumstances. A second hesitation, the advisor knew, and he would be shot, or worse. So when his boss's eyes squinted, one swift motion had crushed the pill into his broth and brought a spoonful of broth onto his gaping mouth. The tear of Africa's eyes shot open, he then softened. If you think for a second, he yawned, that you can get away with this, you'll be, I will. Rex Commissar Hans Hutig dozed back to sleep. Bea stood over the sleeping man, pale as a ghost. Come again on the last part, Herr Hutig? Oh boy. Oh boy. The advisor knew he would be shot, or worse. Oh boy. One swift motion had crushed the pill on onto the broth. Oh boy. Oof. Oh boy. It's just, it's getting wild in Africa, and I love it. How about some southern land grants? Our occupation has left us with thousands of British colonial subjects, most of which are land owners, now under our care, unlike their masters in Canada. These men are mostly in line with our ideals, if not politically, at least pragmatically. After all, they do not want to lose their lands to a native uprising, and in order to ensure their support and make happy our allies in London, we shall let them keep their lands. This should go also grant us an interested partner in keeping the locals in check and a meat shield in case things go quite south. And we should get more PP. Who doesn't want more PP? Let's go and grab... I'm going to go with the attrition planning. Yeah, this would be nice for more organization. And to get less supply consumption, which is actually really, really nice. But we have more infantry than anything else. So. And let's also grab some better guns, shall we? And these are the divisions I've not shown you yet. These are, of course, the SS divisions. Five divisions of motorized. I know I did show you this stuff earlier, but I'll be more specific with what. And we have colonial garrisons as well. So right now we're prioritizing SS these SS divisions, which, as we saw earlier, had tanks in them, which... Should do relatively okay, so we'll see what happens. And who's dead? Someone in Asia? No, Guiana. Close enough. Or maybe not that close. Anything else here? Ah, guns for chemicals. Oh, chemicals for guns. I don't know. Use the gas. Ah, oh, beautiful. Yes. That's the expansions. Rex Gomosa Hans flipped unenthusiastically through the dossier of applicants to the African SS. Most were from the army or planters' sons looking for a better life. All were horrifically unimpressive and some were dubiously Aryan. What a motley bunch of exiles and rejects he had to work with. Unlike the pseudo-degenerate pig Shank and Mueller, he would soon rather die than allow natives into the SS. By filling the ranks of the Sudwest African and Central African SS with mongrel dogs, they annihilated any possible, possible claim that they could have regarding their advancement of National Socialism values. In Africa, Hutig felt his temples throb with hatred as a dossier in front of him faded away, replaced by Schenk and Mueller's faces appearing before him, contorted with laughter, mocking his dedication to the Reich and to National Socialism, stomach foaming with loath and with loathing. He almost vomited all over his desk from the sheer violent distaste he felt for his fellow Reich's commissars. Desperate to dispel his vision, Hutig forced his eyes shut and squeezing tears from the corners to roll down his cheeks and saltily into his mouth. Why did the Reich favor them? They were incompetent, wasteful, indolent, and a, th a thousand other unsavory adjectives. And yet, all he ever got were the drag scraps while his letters on Shank and Mueller's behavior to Germani were ignored, went ignored. It was infuriating, so much churning. Uh, Lee, mind drain inducingly, jaw clenchingly infuriating. Realizing he was losing control over himself, Hutig took a deep breath and tried to calm himself down. He shouldn't pine for attention Germ or from a Germania, and the media lavished upon the other two. It was enough to be devoted servant of the Reich and National Socialism, enough to be a pure spotinist, a pure Aryan. And yet, even as the rage faded and the tears dried, he found it was impossible to banish that image. Were they sitting in Luanda or Hitlerstadt right now, laughing at him? Throwing aside the dossier, Hutig yelled for more cognac. Droll thing life is, that mysterious arrangement of merciless logic for a futile purpose. Let's go and read one or two more focuses, and then we shall conclude this episode with Boa Support Staff. The Bulls have proven to be ardent supporters of our cause, but no matter how brave, they are extremely inefficient soldiers, lacking training, equipment, and skilled officers, in order to ensure the success of their righteous uprising against their decadent capitalist overlords. 
We shall send military support staff to the Boers. Crates of supplies, military instructors, and small units of trained soldiers will help them to hold the line until they fill the gap with our baseline soldiers. Hopefully it all goes okay, in which we get 5,000 more manpower, which we could actually really use. Should they ever attempt to rise up against our oppressors, they too will gain valuable doctrinal understanding and expert experience from our joint training. Very nice. Italy has now won the Italian Turkish War, but we don't care. Awareness returned to Hutuk rapidly. He cursed under his breath, drew his hands away from his strumping head, and assumed a straight for straightened position. Last night's drink would not be allowed to affect the present behavior. After all, a weak state of mind was nothing more than middling degeneracy. A drink was not entirely without merit, however, as epiphany it provided him had prompted today's meeting. Come in, Gunther. Hutig noticed his hands fidget ner nervously as he took a seat. A good sign of his image preceded him. Rex Commissar, you wanted to speak with me? Hans sought for a moment, choosing his words carefully. Gunther, I'm sure you have noticed the discrepancies between our policy and that of our neighbors. He paused, letting the taboo words sit in the still air. Recognizing his subordinate's weariness to speak frankly, he continued. In a foreign land such as this, loyalty to the fatherland is of, up the, is of the utmost importance. We remain surrounded by subhuman savages and vessels of corruption. It is precisely for this reason that I call upon you a most steadfast SS officer for this assignment. Upon the realization that this was not a disciplinary hearing, Gunther's tense disposition relaxed. Uh, Rex Commissar may have been a paranoid man, but Gunther was not clearly the one under suspicion. Today, at least. Hans slid a satchel across the desk and peered into Gunther's eyes. You are to enter Central Africa under the guise of reassignment. Enclosed are all the relevant documents. Observe operations there and take care to remember the highest ideals of the fatherland. After a period of a week, expect a corrective order and another reassignment west. When you have finished this task, you are to report directly to me and me alone. Do you possess sufficient understanding to fulfill your duty? Gunther nodded, hired, and gone as quickly as he arrived. Alone with his hangover yet again, Hutig clenched his fist. He would uncover the corruption and finally correct the heinous mistakes of his appearance. Perhaps then he would no longer be forced to maintain order alone in Africa. He poured himself another drink. Let us hope this operation yields enough fruit. And we're still building. Keep building slaves. Oh, God, we love slaves, don't we? Hey, hopefully get down below 5 billion. Not bad, not bad. I don't think I can sell any more things so we can buy more chemicals or buy more guns, so. Oh, make examples? Well, we don't have any manpower, so... We are literally at 0%. Wait, we have... Okay, effective total manpower modified at minus 10%, which makes sense. Alright then. Promote loyalists? Alright then. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. 5 billion, not bad, the Dupont Accord. As stonily impassive as a marble statue, a statue, Hans stared at his desk at Clifford Dupont, the General Bureau representative for all Africa's minority of British colonists and exiles. All shrunken and wrinkled, he reminded Hutig of a piece of fruit that had been left in the sun for too long. Shivering in the Arctic frigidity of Hutig's office, Dupont was reading the treaty that had been drafted by Hans' underlings. It would give the Anglos gifts of land to develop in the uncolonized ex interior of, in exchange for total and unwearing loyalty to the Reich and a public endorsement of national social values. Privately, he thought it was too lenient. The Anglos had been long as simmering pot just waiting to boil over, and the Germania wanted to give them land? On the other hand, he supposed. Also, Africa had vast tracts of land that, when cleared, would make fantastic farmland. Perhaps they'd prove beneficial to the Reich's prosperity as long as he kept them within an iron grip. Hutig had to stop himself from smiling as DuPont finished reading and deflated like a punctured balloon. If he had his way, the degenerate Anglos would be deep in the coal mines instead of putting on a show of still being important dignitaries, but forcing them to dance along to his tune like marionettes was the next best thing. Signing the treaty would commit Ost Africa's Anglos to Hutig and the National Socialist cause, in ink at least, giving him the legitimacy to persecute them, should they ever stray from the path. He knew Dupont and his cronies secretly wished to undermine his rule, cast them down, and take his realm for their own, feeling suspicion coil around him like a boa constrictor. Hutig wanted nothing more than to send his rotting old would-be backstabber to the camps with the rest of the traitors until he got a go-ahead from Germania. All he could hope for now was to keep them under the jackboot. Dupont, of course, had no choice but to sign. It was written, I should be loyal to the... The nightmare of my choice. Follow with the Bulls of Walt Staff. Oh, you betcha. Now, we had a week here. I'm going to say, let's go halfway into this focus and see what will happen. Reduce patrols. You are out of your bad word mind if you think we're going to do that. Fill in the stores. All right, go ahead. We can probably still do this stuff because we did everything we can right there. Let's get halfway through this. Or, eh, we're actually nine days in. Give it like two, four more days and nothing happens and we'll end the episode. But regardless, if you enjoyed this episode, leave a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. Let me know when the civil or the war between us and those degenerates to the south will begin. And I will see you tomorrow, when we will probably end up in a war and watch the world kind of collapse around us. Thanks for watching. Have a great, great Ost-African rest of your day.